So Renato Canova is a very famous Italian distance running coach who coaches Olympic level athletes at a variety of distances. His training methods have been highly studied over the years and really focuses a lot of time on helping athletes extend their speed endurance so they can hold a given pace for a longer period of time. But can these training methods filter down to us more casual runners and how can we implement them into our training. What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Dean Runner here. Welcome back to another video and today I'm sharing with you guys how special blocks can help our endurance. So implementing special blocks into my training is something I've wanted to do for a long time. In a previous training blog, I did a lot of Canova inspired work with a previous running coach, which was fantastic and I loved it. But I wanted to dive a little bit deeper during this training block and get some special blocks done to see what the magic's all about, how they help and how I felt doing them. So I'm excited today to share with you my experiences, but before that, share with you what they are, how we can implement them, basically what they do and how they can help us improve our speed endurance over those longer distances. So if you're excited for today's video, guys, make sure you give this video a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and we'll start with what they specifically are. So a special block occurs within the specific training phase of a Canova uh, training cycle, which is the final 10 weeks of an athlete's marathon build. So really getting into the specifics there. Now, if you want to learn more about this, I'm talking specifically marathon, but Canova coaches athletes anywhere from 800 meters and up. I am going to talk about some resources at the end some videos for you guys to go and watch and also share a couple of articles that you guys can go and read so stay tuned for that but this is going to be more marathon specific focused so it is where an athlete undertakes two workouts in a day they really need to be well rested going into the workout or into the day I should say and really prepare to take two or three easy days thereafter to allow their body to recover from the intensity there's a couple of different versions of a special block which we'll talk about shortly especially when it comes to implementing implementing it and in terms of this sometimes what Canova likes to do is only get his athletes to drink water and eat vegetables in between the morning and the afternoon session to allow their bodies to get more fat adapted to allow them to use fat as a fuel and become more efficient that's something that's very optional something that I have not done but something that he quite insists on doing with his elite level athletes and if you saw my double threshold day workout video and how you can implement it into your own training you'll notice a similarity in the fact that we have two workouts in a day. Now, when I talk about the double threshold day, we're talking about we're measuring our lactate levels. That's how that type of training and style of training is worked out. So the morning is your goal to aim for around two millimoles of lactate in your blood. But the evening, you can have sort of a scope to go up to 3.5 to 4 millimoles, meaning that morning session is less intense than the evening. With Canova's training, I'm not drawing too much of a similarity here, but there is a morning and an evening, and the morning does, when you come to the mixed version of his special block which we'll talk about the difference between the endurance and the mixed uh, when the mixed one you have a more endurance based session in the morning and a more speed focused session in the evening but always with Canova stuff the specificity is key and we're always trying to work in and around a range of that 100% goal marathon race pace whether that's going down to 90% or going up and above to 105% Canova likes to really squeeze down that pace range and get you working very close to your goal pace so your body can get used to knowing how it feels. So how are these special blocks implemented into a marathon training cycle? Well, as I said earlier, Canova likes to put these in in the final 10 weeks of the specific phase of the marathon training cycle, and he'll drop them in every three to four weeks for an athlete. So an athlete might only do two, maybe three of these in that final 10 weeks. Some examples of both of these types of training. So we talked a second ago about a more mixed training block where there's a bit of speed sprinkle in there, but there's also a more endurance focused special block. So let's give you examples of both of those now so that you have a good idea as to what they are. You start off in the morning by doing 10K at 90% uh, of your marathon effort, then you have a five minute static rest. After that, you might embark on a 20K marathon pace goal run, so 100% goal pace. In between that, as I alluded to, for the very elite level athletes, they might just drink water and eat vegetables throughout the day so that when they come to the evening session, they really are burning fat and becoming more fat adapted and more efficient. 
The evening is then mirrored from the morning, so 10K at 90% effort, five minutes static rest, and then potentially another 20K marathon pace effort, so another 100% effort. Now, that is 50Ks worth of work, which is an insane amount of work to do in a day. And I do hasten to add, I'm gonna talk in this next part about how I've adapted it for us mere mortals training with this type of method. For a more mixed block where you're adding a bit of speed in, which is something that I've been doing during this block and I'll explain why shortly, you start off with 10K in the morning and then you have once again a 5K, a five minute static rest, that 10K once again being at 90% goal pace. And then you might have another marathon pace long run, so 100% effort. Maybe that's a 10K, maybe that's up to 20K, it can range. So that's the morning, again, very similar to what we saw in the endurance block, but then the evening is where it gets different. We do another 10K, at 90% marathon effort, five minute static rest, and then we're looking to do some speed work. And this is all about speed. Canova hits home here that this workout is all about speed. He likes to get his athletes on the track, and he'll get you to do some kind of track workout, whether it's sort of like K repeats or whatever it might be. And he'll say, I want you to split these laps at a certain time. So he's not looking for you to hit a certain pace. He wants you to run laps in 65 seconds, 68 seconds, 70 seconds, whatever it might be. And the second that you cannot hit those splits, you cannot hit a lap in that time, you drop out from that rep, you stop, and then you go again on the next rep until you basically can't go anymore and you can't hold that pace. And why is that? Because Canova said this evening session of this special block is purely about speed. You've got all that endurance done in the morning and the first part of this workout. We're not worried about any more endurance. We're looking to focus on speed. So that's the two different types of special blocks that you can implement. So how did I implement these into my London Marathon training plan? Well, I adapted it quite significantly to the level of athlete that I am. And what I made sure I did actually was before I even embarked on a special block, I got about 10 or 11 double threshold days under my belt before I even considered doing this because obviously this is such an intense volume uh, for a runner of my standard and ability and for most of us out there that there is obviously that injury risk that comes with it. Obviously Canova training is a lot more specific so we're not pushing our bodies in terms of running really fast and really burning that top end speed. It is a very controlled effort but it's the duration and the endurance that you're working on that really brings on the fatigue massively I found and can really obviously then cause a drop in form, create injuries and that sort of thing. So there are obviously things that you need to be aware of, but how I adapted it was I scaled everything down to almost match up with what I was doing on my double threshold day. So most of my double threshold days, the morning and the evening ended up being somewhere between nine to 10 miles in the morning and evening. So I was getting around 18 to 20, sometimes 21 miles worth of volume in a day with my double threshold work. So with my special blocks, that's exactly what I aim to do. And what I wanted to do is kind of almost alternate them week in, week out. So I wasn't quite getting the endurance intensity of the 20 Ks worth of marathon effort. There was no way I was gonna get 50 Ks worth of work done in a day. It was just a case of on a double threshold day, 20 miles, and on a speed uh, special block, 20 miles. That's all my aim was in this. So I scaled it right back and did, rather than 10 K, I did five miles, at 90%, five minute rest and five miles at marathon pace. So I kept the morning 10 miles. Evening, I did the mixed version because I was doing a, a double threshold day uh, every other week, therefore I, the evening was speed work. So again, I wanted to keep the special block in the mixed area rather than the endurance because I wanted to keep that speed work in every single week. So what I ended up doing with that was another five miles at 90%, having the five minute rest, and then doing some kind of speed workout, whether that was five by a mile, whether that was eight by a K. I was trying to make the workout five miles worth of work. So with the rest and recoveries, it did creep slightly over 20 miles, but just making sure it was 20 miles worth of quality work. So that's how I integrated it, making sure it matched up with my double threshold days, not making sure that one week I had 20 miles worth of work, and then the special block week I had like 25 or 30, and back down and having this yo-yo effect. I needed to keep it consistent, something that my body was used to, but something that will push it a little bit further than it has done before. So rightly or wrongly, that's how I've adapted it to suit my marathon training, and I feel like it's worked absolutely fantastically. I feel really, really fit, and I feel really, really good. And I wanna say a massive thanks to Canova himself for publicly putting out a lot of this information for people to read, for people to learn. It's fascinating to study, and I've had a joy just learning about his philosophies and how he coaches. Who I also wanna say a massive thanks to his Sweat Elite for providing probably the most in 
in-depth information uh, out there that I've loved reading and watching. So what I'm going to do, guys, is link to their article down in the description below, plus two or three of their Canova videos, which I highly, highly recommend you watch. They've done a dedicated video of Canova coaching his athletes in the morning session and the evening session. You watch them back to back so you can see the structure. He really hits home in a more mixed uh, special block way with the speed stuff. You'll see exactly what I mean when he takes his athletes to the track. He really gives them an in-depth talking to as to what he wants them to do. And it's really great to hear. So I wanna say a massive thanks to Sweat Elite for publishing that video and obviously making that content available to people like me and you just to learn and grow our running knowledge. And a massive thanks to you guys for listening and following along with the training. If you have any more questions, please do feel free to drop them in the comments below. And if you did miss the Double Threshold Day video, make sure you check that out on screen now along with another really useful, informative video. That's it from me today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Until then.